PDT here, Prophet David Taylor, for your weekly live prophetic word. And I can't tell you how happy I am today to be coming to you to release uh, the prophetic word from the Lord, because as you hear me say all the time, it is an honor and a privilege for God to use you. It is an honor and a privilege to serve God in His kingdom. It is an honor and a privilege, and the, the right thing you could do with your life is to surrender it to the control of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't just accept Him as Savior. Also accept Him as Lord, because there are things He wants you to accomplish in this life. There are things that He wants you to do in this life, things that only He knows. So He's the only one that can tell you what you're supposed to do. You can't find that in a relationship. You can't find that in a bottle. You can't find it anywhere, but in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. So I strongly encourage those of you that are still struggling with your call to surrender to the Lord and not just accept Him as Savior, but also accept Him as Lord. Let Him tell you what to do. And as He begins to tell you what to do, you'll see the blessing. You'll see your understanding. You'll see nothing but increase, even though it's going to be struggle sometimes, even though it's going to be learning how to kill your flesh, even though it's going to be beating back the demons and fighting off the devil. It's still worth it. Because whatever it is that God has called you to do, that is your destiny. That is the reason you were born. That is the reason you are who you are. And there is no better use of your life than in the hand of the, God, the Creator, the one that gave you life. There's no better use. There's no higher plan. His plan is better than yours. His plan is higher than anybody else's plan. And over time, you will begin to see how much better His plan is than yours. Okay, so I just said that to encourage. That's not a prophetic word. I just wanted to encourage those of you that are watching this. So I want to welcome everybody that's listening to me on the podcast. Welcome to everybody that's watching me live on Periscope and Facebook. And welcome to all those that are watching the replay on YouTube. Okay, <clears throat> let's jump in. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for, thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, God, thank you for your shed blood because we are dead in the water. Ghost, feel every word, oh God, every word on my tongue, every gesture of my hands, every look on my face, oh God, you be in it so that your words can be spoken, so that what you want communicated will be communicated, oh God, that you might be glorified and that the saints might be edified, oh God, to the extension of your kingdom. And I thank you for the opportunity to serve you while I yet live. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, <clears throat> today's prophetic word is... Fresh fruit. What'd you say? I said, today's prophetic word is fresh fruit. Let me give you a little background before we jump into the scripture. Okay, if you've ever grown anything, if you've ever been around a farmer, or if you've ever had a garden of your own, you know how long it takes to grow something, especially if you're going to try to grow some crops. There's a lot you have to go through. In terms of preparing that ground, in terms of preparing, uh, being sure that you have healthy seed, in terms of sowing during the right time of year, in terms of being sure you've carved out your rows, and that you have to really get all your ducks in a row if you are going to plant crops. Because there's so many things that can happen along the way in terms of the ground being bad, the seed being bad, and then when you get little things springing up, then the bugs are going to come. And then maybe you have to fertilize around it because maybe the soil isn't rich enough. And just on and on and on and on and on. It's a lot of work. The fruit at the end thereof, however, is worth it. Uh, if you like fruit, I want you to imagine life without your favorite fruit. If you like kiwis, if you like pears, apricots, pomegranates, bananas, raisins, which are, of course, dried grapes. Um, anything that you like, dates, I particularly love dates, I, oh my goodness, I love dates. I want you to imagine what life would be like without your favorite fruit. Can't put it on cereal, can't eat it like a snack, can't put it on an ice cream sundae, just, there's no fruit, there's just no fruit on earth. Can you imagine what that would be like? So as much trouble as it takes to get a tree going that can bear the fruit that we need, the end result, the product, is worth it, okay? 
But today's message, today's prophetic word is fresh fruit. Oh. Now, why is that significant to call it fresh? Well, first of all, what happens with fruit that's been hanging on a vine too long? After a while, it starts to dry up. After a while, it starts to discolor. After a while, it starts to lose that flavor. Okay? What happens to fruit that you've picked and that you've started to eat and then maybe you refrigerate it or maybe you leave it on the table and just kind of sits there a while? What happens to it? That fruit going to rot. <laughs> okay? And there's very few things that are nastier than rotten fruit. You know what I'm talking about? Just when fruit is just gone bad and, you know, it's discolored, it's brown or it's green, it's moldy, and it's just, oh, it's just disgusting. Very few things are more disgusting than rotten fruit. Okay? So I said that to, to say that today's prophetic word is fresh fruit. Why is that important? Well, I'm going to read the scripture and then I'll break it down to you some more. We're going to be reading out of John chapter 15, verse 8, the Gospel of John. Now, the man that wrote this book was Jesus' best friend when the Lord walked the earth as a human. The man that wrote the Gospel of John was the disciple of John, the apostle John. He wrote the Gospel of John, he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and he wrote the book of Revelation. He was also the man that the Lord trusted his mother Mary with. So when the Lord was on the cross dying, he said, Woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. So in other words, because the Lord knew he wasn't going to be on earth too much longer after he resurrected, he wanted to be sure that Mary was taken care of. Well, he gave his mom to this man, John. Okay? And at the Last Supper, there was a disciple that laid his head on Jesus' chest. He laid his head on Jesus' chest. That man was John. This man, all that is the same guy. Okay? So that's the man that are, is writing these words that we're going to read today. We're going to look at the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 8. <clears throat> King James Version. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Okay, Berean Study Bible. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. Uh, Berean Literal Bible. In this my Father is glorified, that you should bear much fruit, and ye shall be my disciples. New International Version, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So you get the idea, because over and over and over, the, the different translations are basically saying the same thing. So the Lord says that the way Father is glorified is that we bear much fruit, and the Lord says that's how we prove or show that we are actually disciples or learners from the word. That word disciple comes from the word discipline. And in the original language, it just means to be a learner. Sometimes we use the word discipline as if it's synonymous, synonymous with punishment or self-denial. But discipline actually means to be a disciple, it means to be a learner. It means to learn. And so the Lord says, the way that you show or that you prove that you learn from me is that you bear much fruit. And that is also what glorifies Father. But our prophetic word today is fresh fruit. So I gave you those examples before about what happens with fruit that stays on the vine too long. And what happens with fruit that you've begun to eat and you don't finish, you just leave it sit out. It rots and it gets very, very dis disgusting. And so what I've discovered and what the Holy Spirit wanted me to, to communicate today is that there are a lot of people in the kingdom, especially people that have been in the kingdom for a while. I'm sorry, I keep getting this piece of dry lip, I'm trying to get rid of it, sorry. Uh, people that have been in the kingdom for a while can get used to serving God in a certain way, and then they can kind of max out and things can get kind of dry and stale because they've become so routine. They're so used to doing the same things in the same way, in the same order, over and over and over again, sometimes for decades, until that fruit can get kind of stale. And the Lord wants us to bear fresh fruit because he said we're supposed to bear much fruit. That means it's supposed to be some new fruit coming. If we're bearing much fruit, okay, that means it's not like a one-time thing. But it means as the seasons go on, we're supposed to be bearing more and more fruit. And when you come on the broadcast, please like and share, because whenever prophetic word is going forth, we want as many people as possible to see it. Okay? 
So please like and share this broadcast as you come on. So the Lord says that we're supposed to be bearing much fruit. That means sometimes that fruit is supposed to be fresh fruit. It's not supposed to be, uh, my pastor talked about it uh, several months ago. He said he heard some people still singing some worship songs from like the 80s and the 90s. And he's like, haven't y'all written a new song since then? Haven't the Holy Spirit given you a new song since then? Because some people are still holding on to the old way that God used them. And that gets me to the heart of what the Holy Spirit wanted me to say. The Spirit of God wanted me to say to the saints that you need to begin to open your mind and allow God to show you new ways and new levels he can take you to to use you. Sometimes when you see people that are what I call your, your heroes, like if you have a spiritual hero, someone in the spirit that you really admire, a pastor, an apostle, an evangelist, if you have a financial hero, you know, like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, someone that's done really well financially and has great wealth. If you have a social hero, a family hero, like your dad, because my dad, my biological dad, has always been my hero, still my hero to this day. Uh, if you have an academic hero, someone that you think is highly intelligent, highly learned, a great scholar, when you have heroes like that, sometimes there's something inside of us that says, well, that can never be me. I can never do that. But if you think about it, they don't have, whatever your heroes, your heroes are, they don't have any more than you do. Think about it. They got two eyes. They got two ears. They got one nose. I got a big old nose. They got one nose. They got one mouth. They got two hands. They got two arms. Okay, they got two legs. They got two feet. They don't have any more than you. So when you look at them and you say, wow, what a life. When you say, wow, what accomplishments. You say, wow, blah, 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 blah. They don't have any more than you do. So what's the difference? The difference is they might have a different level of faith, but I guarantee they have a different level of thinking. We said, well, they're more talented than I am. Some people succeed and it's not about the talent. Some people succeed based on diligence. Some, a lot of people succeed because they don't give up. Or as the old saying goes, a big shot ain't nothing but a little shot that kept on shooting. But with the Holy Spirit... <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> what the Holy Spirit wanted me to convey is that God wants some fresh fruit out of his children. God does not just want you to keep doing the same old thing, bringing him the same old songs and bringing him the same old offerings and bringing him the same old everything year after year after year. Because nature doesn't work that way. Nature comes off with some fresh fruit in its season every year. And so for that to happen in your life, you must allow the Holy Spirit to expand your thinking. You must allow him to expand your mind. You must allow God to show you new ways. And I can almost guarantee you that when you begin to see God along that order, he's going to show you some stuff that you never thought you could do. You just kind of excused yourself from the running. You just said, well, that could never be me and just wrote it off. But what if God is saying it is you? Remember, that's what God said to Gideon in the Bible. God called him a mighty man of valor. And Gideon looked around him because he thought the Lord was talking to somebody else. And Gideon was like, I know you're not talking to me. And maybe God has been waiting to get you to a point where you have maxed out, where you have plateaued on the level you were on. And whenever you have plateaued on the level that you were on in God's kingdom, there's always another level. There's always something else that God can take you to that you've never seen before. There's always something that God can bring you that you've never seen before. And so the Spirit of God wanted to let me know to say that God wants some fresh fruit out of his children. God wants us to think in new ways. Because remember, if you have a hero, whoever they are, they don't have more than you. But say, they say, well, well, they're smarter than I am. Then if you need wisdom, you can ask from God. Smarts doesn't come from people. Smarts comes from God. He said, well, they're more successful than I am. Success doesn't come from, e uh, from people. As the scripture says, promotion does not come from the east or the west or the south. But God is a judge. He puts down one and sets up another. Okay? So if you have faith, if you believe in the God that's able, uh, my pastor read it this morning where God says, uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, that the Lord is the one that gives you power to get wealth. In other words, it's not by your own strength or by your own hand or by your own effort if you want to get wealthy, it won't be by what you do. It'll be God that gives the increase. See, so in every situation, 
uh, it's a matter of faith and it's a matter of thinking. And so if, if you've always wanted to write a book, uh, I tell people all the time, the first time you get a book you've written in your hand, it will completely change your life. It's a feeling that you can't know and a feeling that I can't describe until you experience it. But once you do, once you get that finished copy in your hand, your life will never be the same. You're going to want that feeling over and over and over again because it's something about finishing a book that is life changing. <clears throat> and that's how you have to start your journey as an author, one book at a time. OK, but you must begin to open your mind to what the spirit of God is saying. Open your mind to what God can do, because whenever the Lord shows you something, remember, he's not asking you to do all that in your strength. He's not asking you to do all that according to your plan or your power or your resources. He's showing you what he wants and anything that God requires of you, God will pay for. If God shows you something <clears throat> and it's beyond <clears throat> excuse me, your current career level, and it's beyond your current financial level, but the Lord shows it to you in a vision or a dream or a scripture or maybe something that burns in your heart that just won't go away. If God is calling you to the higher level, that means he has to supply the resources. He's not calling you to do it in your own strength. That's not what promised land living is. Promised land living is even if there are giants, he will give you the power. He will give you the wisdom to overcome them. He knows there are giants in the land. He knows there are things in the land that are bigger than you. That was never the point. The things in the land, it doesn't matter whether or not they're bigger than you, because they're not bigger than your God. And that, my brothers and my, and my sisters, is the point. So for you to bear fresh fruit, <clears throat> you've got to be open to God giving you some new melodies, some new beats on the drum, some new beats on your NPC, on your drum machine. you got to be open to God giving you some new ideas for what you write. You got to be open to God giving you some new businesses. You got to be open to God giving you some new network connections. Maybe there's a circle of people out there that you could be a blessing to and they're going to be a blessing to you and you haven't met them yet or maybe you know them but you don't hang with them because you keep saying they ain't really my peeps. What if God is about to change your life and say, yes, they are your peeps? What if he's going to open up a door and get you in a crowd of people that you've never been around before? But see, that's not going to happen if you don't believe that God can and will do that, and it's not going to happen if you don't adjust up here because, oh, uh, huh, just like rotten fruit is disgusting. I mean, there are very few things in this world that are nastier than decaying, decomposing, rotten, brown, nasty fruit. Very few things in this world that are nastier than that. Well, I stopped by to tell you. When you bring old baggage into new situations, <laughs> it's just like that fruit. Haven't you ever met somebody and they're so bitter over things that happened years ago that that's all they talk about? Don't you know people like that? That no, no matter how the conversation starts and no matter what the original topic, you know that before that conversation is over, that person is going to drag up all that same old rotten fruit that they're still hanging on to because they did me wrong 20 years ago and that Sherman, he left me for his secretary and my father never loved me. He always loved my brother and my sister, but he never loved me. And I didn't even know my mama and she didn't come back in my life till I was 16 and all, all that. Don't you know people to where that's all they talk about all the time? That's rotten fruit. That's something that's past his expiration date. That's something that you were out of season still bringing up because that's rotten and it's dead. You can't do anything about it because it's the past. There's not one of us that can do anything about the past. But if you're one of those people that every time you open your mouth, you're, you're bringing that with you. That is why God hasn't been able to elevate you into new things. Because as soon as he opens a new door, you bring that old rotten fruit with you. And then you ruin it. Do you, do you really like to see people like that coming? You know what I'm talking about? As soon as they come to sit down at the lunch table, or as soon as they come to sit down at the cafeteria table, or any kind of situation you're in, when that person shows up, you know when Sister Sally Mae sit down, she's going to talk about that husband, and that man been dead for 35 years. Sister Sally Mae is 85 years old. Sister Sally Mae is 85 years old, and that husband died when she was 50. It is now 35 years later, and she's still talking about that Sherman. 
I can't stand him. I should have never married him. I knew he was no good. For, I just knew it. I knew he wasn't no good. And sure enough, and he cheated on me, and he did this, and he didn't leave me no money when he died. And blah, blah, blah. And after a while, you're like, Sister Sally May. That 35 years ago, that man been dead for three and a half decades. But if you're like Sister Sally May, you got that old rotten fruit and you won't move on. That's why God can't expand your vision or your dream or your horizons because you're still harping on that which was. So for the Spirit of God to show you Jeremiah 33 and 3, great and mighty things that you don't know, new things that God wants to do in your life, for him to do that, you are going to have to allow him to increase your faith and stretch what you believe God can do because he's not asking you to do it in your strength and he's going to increase your faith again to stretch you to help you overcome giants. Because he's not asking, he, God is not pretending that the giants aren't there. And God is not asking you to live in denial. That is not faith. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. It does not call those things that are as though they are not. That's denial. God is not calling you to denial. God is calling you to faith. God knows that the giants are there. But he wants to show you that he has the power to overcome that giant, it doesn't matter if the giant is bigger than you, the giant is not bigger than your God. But you have to believe that for you to do it, for it to do you any good. And God is trying to give you the wisdom and the tools to fight those giants, fight those things you never overcome. Because whatever kind of heroes you have, I stop by to tell you, that can be you too. If it's the will of God for you, it can be you too. I don't care how long you've been watching somebody from a distance. That person started out as a little kid at some point, And that person saw somebody on TV and said, when I grow up, I want to be just like them. Well, I stopped by to tell you that it's you too. If that's the will of God for you, that's talking to you. You can do new things. You can give God some new fruit. You can give him some new songs. You can give him a new dance. You can give him some new words. You can give God a new praise. God can give you some new ideas. OK, but that is what God is calling for, for some fresh fruit, not the same old, same old recycle over and over and over again. It's time to let that go and time to bear something fresh. Do you follow what I'm saying? All right. Amen and amen. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now uh, and I will pray for them. When you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, is there any more prophetic words? Is there any deliverance? Do we need any demons cast out? Are there any financial words, and is there any physical healing that needs to come forth? That's what I'm doing when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues. Okay? Here we go. Okay, the image I'm getting is I'm seeing a bountiful harvest. That's what I saw come up in my spirit. I saw that. A bountiful harvest. I saw all kinds of fruit and corn and grapes, and I saw a just and I saw it rising up and spilling over. So, if the Spirit of God gives me a picture like that, what that means is that that's coming up in somebody's life. So you need to grab hold of that by faith. That if God says bountiful harvest, then that's what you can begin to expect in your life. Where not only is the fruit rising up, but it's spilling over. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me ask again. Okay, this time I got a color. I got the color green. The color green is life, plant life, foliage. Okay, chlorophyll, the photosynthetic process is life. It's greenery. Okay, so what that means is that new life bursting forth. See, those images... See, because the Spirit always agrees, those images fall right in line with what he said the Word was. Because when you're activated in the prophetic, you can sometimes hear a sound, sometimes you can prophesy over a scripture, sometimes you can see an image, sometimes you can see a color. Uh, many different things the Spirit of God can give you to illustrate what it is he's trying to say. So he gave me a picture of a bountiful harvest and he gave me the color green. That's life. That's new life bursting forth. You see what I mean? So when the Holy Ghost says stuff like that, what that means is that for all that hear it, if you add your faith to that, you can get it. You can have it in your life. You can have new life bursting forth in your life if you believe it. You can have a bountiful harvest bursting forth in your life if you believe it. And if you believe it, then you go before the Lord and ask him for specific instructions as to how to make it manifest for you. 
See that? I say it all the time. HBO. Hear God, believe what God has to say, and then obey what he tells you to do. I say it every week. HBO. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. That's our prophetic word for this week. Thank you so much to those of you that are listening to me on the podcast, those of you that are listening to me live on Facebook Live and Periscope, and those of you that are watching the replay on YouTube. God bless you. Uh, I have many things out now. I have my music on my Facebook Live page, or you can look it up. Uh, look up hashtag PDT, hashtag New Music Friday, because I'm dropping uh, musical tracks on Friday. The last one I just dropped was a hymn, because I have a project called 150 Hymns, and I'm writing a hymn for every song. And I'm so excited. I've been excited about it. I've been working on that for years. So I'm excited about that project. So uh, my new hymn, my first hymn, uh, well, I finished it a long time ago, but I wanted to make sure you guys know what it was. It's called The Law of the Lord, and it's based on Psalm 1. That's on my Facebook page and also on my Twitter Hashtag PDT, S-O-T-C. And uh, my prophetic devotional is out. Now, the first quarter is almost up. March is almost gone. So the second one's going to be out soon that covers April, May, and June. So when I have that, those hard copies, I'll let you know about that too. But that's coming up real soon, so get ready for that. And I'm doing some music with some new people. I just have a lot of stuff going on and some new books I'm writing. So I have a lot of irons in the fire. I have a lot of stuff in the mix. But I, I say that to let you know that I'm practicing what I preach, that I'm trying to let God use my life to be as fruitful as I can be. I'm not just running my mouth. I know people have a hard time with people that say they're spiritual leaders that say one thing and they do something else. But I'm saying that to let you know I'm actually doing what I'm saying. There's nothing that I'm saying to you that I'm not doing myself. Okay? So I'm excited. I'm happy to uh, be releasing my music, releasing my books, releasing my devotionals. I'm happy and I've got so much more. Some stuff I haven't even told you about yet I got coming up. So just stay tuned, but thank you so much. So if you want to support my ministry, uh, my Zell is prophetdavidtaylor, gmail.com. Uh, you can go to my Patreon, my patreon.com slash shades of the cross. You can support me that way. Um, but I appreciate your support because it's all going forward to to create these things as God, that God has put inside of me. Okay? All right. God bless you. Have a great week. Remember that it's time to bear some fresh fruit. So open your mind and open your faith to the Lord showing you some new things, showing you doing things that you haven't done before, showing you in new positions and levels of life that you've never walked in. God wants to show you that today and this week. So be expecting it. Be expecting the Lord to show you that stuff. And the Lord is going to show you some great and mighty things that you don't know. And he's going to show you the ways he wants you to give him some fresh fruit. All right. Amen and amen. God bless. Uh, my no more genies is what's today. Today's the 8th of March. My no more genies is this Thursday because that's the second Thursday. Okay. So this Thursday, March 12th, I'm going to be doing my no more genies broadcast. The second Thursday of every month, I do a broadcast called no more genies which has to do with getting rid of our genie concept of God. So instead of thinking God is some kind of genie and we just say the magic words and rub the lamp and get what we want, all that is wrong. We go into a deep dive in what the word actually says so we can be walking scripturally and biblically and we can get rid of that genie concept. That's coming up this Thursday at 7 p.m. Okay? Uh, what I've been working on is a, a series from the kingdom of heaven about the stuff that Jesus actually taught and it has revolutionized my life. The parable of the, the wheat and the tares, the parable of the sower, the parable of the net, just all the stuff that Jesus taught. The kingdom of God is like this, and the kingdom of God is like that. It's completely revolutionized my life, which is why I started out by saying we're supposed to be preaching and teaching what the Lord taught. Okay? So anyway, that's coming up on this Thursday. So I've got a lot of stuff. So again, thank you. And so if you want to join me Thursday live at 7 p.m., that would be great. Amen, and God bless you. So I will see you then. And some of you I will see next Sunday at my regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Have a great weekend. Remember, it's time for some fresh fruit.